What is going on Average Dad fans? Welcome back to another video and today is a follow-up video four weeks on from purchasing the Tag Heuer Connected. Today I want to talk about the good, the bad and the beautiful. Um, so this will be a quick video because I need to take it off charge to do this video and it doesn't like being off charge. Let's get into it. So first things first, let's do it in reverse order. Let's talk about the beautiful. This is fairly obvious. It's the main reason, one of the main reasons that you would purchase the Tag Heuer Connected Smartwatch and it is the way it looks. It looks stunning with its stainless steel 45 mil case, its ceramic bezel, deployment bracelet clip, which I absolutely love when you can get fitted at first. Um, and it's rubber silicone straps that come in various different colors. It looks, feels like a quality Swiss watch. It's just got different internals. So that's the beautiful part. I think you can all agree it's a beautiful looking watch. Whether it's worth the price or not, we'll get into in a bit. The bad. It has to be done. I would not be an honest tech reviewer if I didn't talk about the bad. And sadly, the Tag Heuer Connected has its downfalls. Number one, for anybody that has the watch, and this has been kind of the most common gripe amongst the community on my channel, is the charging and battery life. When I first got the watch, I was optimistic that, you know what, like, as long as it's getting the day in a bit, then I can charge it. I mean, if you've got an Apple Watch or, a, or some other smart watches, maybe you're used to charging it every day or two. I had a Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus before this, um, and I got 10 days out of that. Now, we're not getting days and days out of a Tag Heuer connected watch or an Apple Watch. They do different things. They've got OLED screens, they're touch screen the vibration, the haptics, there's a lot that goes into it that takes up battery life. The Garmin isn't touchscreen mostly, the haptics aren't as good, the functionality is great for, you know, tracking sports, but for all those smart features, it's not as good. So there's, there's pros and cons to each, but I chose this smartwatch because I wanted one that looked good, that I can wear to the gym, as I can't wear any of the other luxury watches I have at the moment because I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going into the office, I'm not going out for dinner, I'm not doing anything of the sort. So the charging capabilities, the battery life. I'm not lying to you when I say that you will never get 24 hours from this watch. If you take it off the charging puck, which I do regularly at 7 in the morning, you will be lucky to make it through till 10 p.m. that evening. I am fairly active. I would say a typical day for me would be an hour of exercise using the heart rate monitor and sensors built in. Not really GPS tracking for me. A lot of it's indoor gym weights, a um, bit of cardio, but sometimes I'll go for a, a long walk and I'll be using the GPS. So that is obviously going to drain the battery. I do have it hooked up to the iPhone and we'll, and we'll get to that later. And that obviously takes battery life because you're constantly getting notifications on your watch. Again, you've bought a smartwatch. That's kind of one of the main reasons you've bought a smartwatch. <clears throat> Given all that and using a smartwatch like a smartwatch should be used, I have regularly not been getting 12 hours, let alone, let alone 24. And again, that's not super heavy usage. I don't really touch the watch. That's what she said. <laughs> often. I don't reply to messages from the watch. Some of you can't anyway. Um, I don't use the watch for listening to music. I use that through my phone when I'm at the gym. So it's not getting heavy use and it's not getting 12, maybe sometimes not even getting 10 hours, which is really, really disappointing. Now, along with the fact that the battery life is utter trash, like 
so bad, bear in mind you've paid £1,500 or $1,500 for this product. There is the charging puck itself. This thing. Okay, so it looks like a normal charging puck that you get with your Apple Watch. However, you can see in the photo, and you can see here, there's a three little pins. Nine times out of ten, you will never actually be charging your device. It won't line up nine times out of ten for me. And the reason I say that is because I'm not taking the time to pick up the puck and do that. What I want to do, it's convenience, particularly because I have to do it all the time, charge it. I just want to lay it down and it charges automatically. Now, if you've not got it lined up the right way, it won't connect. You have to make sure that the three pins are lined up. And I know this sounds like just a stupid, petty gripe, but it's not. My Apple Watch for £400 has a puck that you can just well, you don't even have to put the Apple Watch on the puck, just hover it about a centimetre away and the puck magnetically attaches. This, you have to make sure you've lined up. Two or three times in the last month, I have thought I have charged my watch overnight, only to find out that the puck wasn't properly connected, so it didn't charge. Very, so there you go. That's magnetically connected, but you can clearly see it's not going to charge like that. Very frustrating. Given that the battery life is so bad, when you find out that, well, actually, if it's not charged, you ain't using that watch. It does charge relatively quickly, but not as quick as Tag Heuer had stated. Uh, if you pop this in charge for an hour, you'll maybe get it to 40%, but it's like a weak 40%. Like, that 40% lasts a couple of hours, so I don't like it. That's one of the bad points. The next bad point, and I've had comments and questions about this, is it's functionality and ability to pair with iOS. Now, while this is so far improved from what Wear OS used to be, I had an old uh, a Galaxy watch before and um, an iPhone. It was really odd. Obviously, it's my own fault for getting that. Um, but still, it was Wear OS, so it should work with iOS. However, functionality wasn't great. So nowadays, Wear OS is far better. But again, I'm, it's a bit of a gripe. With Wear OS, you have to download the Wear OS app, you have to download the Google Fit app, the Google Health app, you have to download the Daghor Connected app. <sighs> There's just a lot that you have to do, and then when you think you've downloaded everything, you have to go into each app, accept all the terms, pop in your way, health, and again, that's fine, but you have to do it for each app. It took me a couple of weeks to realise that, hold on, the watch isn't tracking anything I'm doing because I hadn't properly fully set up Google Fit very frustrating. My advice would be to get the most out of this watch is spend three to four hours when you first get it watching YouTube videos, reading manuals online and, and just going through every step of the process and all the functionality it offers. Then you'll get the most out of the watch. I didn't do that, that's my fault. However, even though it's all done now, it's still lacking in some areas. Sticking with the bad, and I promise this does get good. I am a fairly positive guy, believe it or not. So uh, we will get to positive stuff soon. But another bad thing for me, the sports tracking app. So obviously you've got Google Fit that you can track all the sports. Google Fit app is, is great. Or is it, yeah, Google Fit app is great. It's got all the sports, like indoor and outdoor sports that you can imagine. But the Tag Heuer Connected, or the Tag Heuer Sports, sorry, has running, walking, cycling, and swimming. End of. You can click other, but the tracking on that is not accurate at all. My heart rate was like 30 beats higher than it was in real life. Excuse me. So yeah, the Tag Heuer sports app, while it looks bloody awesome, like it really does, the, the, the graphic you get, and I'll pop it up in the corner, when you're about to start a, a workout, the, the whole space, three, two, one thing. I really enjoy it. And again, that just goes back to the, the beautiful part. The design of the watch and the way that the, the text appears and the images and all the little things and animations are, are amazing. They really are. There's just a few too many bad points that start to really piss you off, especially when you spent such a lot of money. But anyway, that's the choice I made and I'm keeping it. I am here with the watch. There is a returns policy through TAG that you can return it, but I am keeping it because I do love the watch. I guess I just have to 
resign the fact that I need to make sure that I am lining the charger up correctly and hey ho, doing it every night, sometimes twice a day. That's what she said. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about the good. The good points about this watch, barring the obvious that I've mentioned before is how beautiful it is, is its robustness, believe it or not. This is actually quite a sturdy watch. The strap and the clip is it's never gonna come off. It's never like, no matter how hard you pull and stuff, um, it, it's really quite durable. And the stainless steel casing has in a month, no mini scratches, nothing. The ceramic bezel and the, um, I don't know, I, I maybe should look this up, but it's not obviously Gorilla Glass, but the, 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 I don't know if there's a ceramic shield or something on the screen as well, but there's, there's no scratches or anything. So that's really good. Another thing I like is the Tag Heuer watch faces. You just know it's a tag from a mile away, um, which, for some people, that's why they're buying it. It's a status symbol to some people, including me, if I'm honest. It's, did I need another tag watch? No, but it's nice to be able to treat yourself if you work hard for it and you deserve it, which I probably don't. So the customization and the watch faces are great. And obviously in most watch faces, there's separate areas where if you click on the screen, it'll bring up heart rate, music, fitness. You can change all of those shortcuts. I also like the fact, another good point is it's got physical buttons. So when running or swimming, it's got the, the physical buttons and the crown itself is obviously like of the highest quality. So you get that really nice feeling when you're moving through the menus. The physical stainless steel buttons are awesome and they're totally customizable as well. So that's all top, really, really good. Really enjoy that. Sticking with the customization, the watch straps, as I mentioned before, are easily changed. Now, you can buy the watch straps from Tag, which is what I would do. I, I, I tend not to buy third-party watch straps. Uh, however, they're between 130 and 500 pounds, depending on what strap you go for. So they're not cheap, but they are good. So, you, you know, you pay, you pay for the quality that you're looking to receive. So that's been the beautiful, the bad, and the good of the Tag Heuer watch after a month. As I mentioned, I'm sticking with it. I am more than ever now, I've noticed that I'm actually probably not wearing this every day. I do change between the Apple Watch and this one. And as things start to move on with offices opening up and being able to hold meetings and start traveling again, I can start to wear one of my other dozen watches. That, that's not a brag, it's just, I really like watches. Um, so this won't be getting used as much as it is just now, but I really enjoy it. It's really nice, and yes, 1,500 pounds is a lot of money, but at the end of the day, it's one of the cheapest tag watches you can get, and it is still kind of Swiss slash China made. So that's what you get with the Tag Horror Connected. I hope I've answered um, a lot of questions here. I can't think of anything else that I've missed, but please pop a comment down below. I'll answer any questions you want to know about the watch. And thank you very much for watching. Um, and again, I'll link to the previous video and give that a look as well, first impressions. Take care, peace. <laughs>